It is time for Mr. Philip Plum to uh, take the nearest exit, shall we say. So yes, he is actually attempting to besiege some of our castles in the area, and I thought to myself, okay, I don't really want to do any more siege defenses, at least until I can not help it any further. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take him out on the fields of battle. Now they have about 100 units right here and we have 170 of my own. I have no one around me right here. I actually have no idea what Dragonstone is doing at this time. I really have no idea because it seems like they're just holding feasts. <laughs> it feels like they're just holding feasts and that's it. So I'm not entirely sure whether that's just a a way to get morale up, obviously, you know, I mean, in gameplay terms, is it a way to get morale up? Maybe. I don't know. But what I do know is that Dragonstone has not been entirely active in this area, with the exception of a couple of vassals. And I would hope that they are maybe going to show themselves just that little bit more as we go forward, because I really don't want to wage a one-man war against the Westerlands because these guys are from the Westerlands and I've primarily been fighting them off. And by the way, while I was running around in Essos, they took about three of the castles that I took back. Well, technically, we took, the, we, you know, well, we took it from the Reach and then they took it from us and then it was Westerlands, and then they only had about 30 units in each garrison, with the exception of one, which had 60, and I was able to take those actually very easily. And there was not, there were no, no defenders, no nothing, so pretty easy to get those back, but it's the whole point, you know, the whole point is that the Westerlands is very much active in this area, and hopefully we can prevent them from doing so by at least eliminating a couple of them, and prevent them from being a little bit too... A little bit too active. So I'm going to get off my mount right here because I am so supremely confident in my amazing two-handed Warhammer right here that I will be taking the fight to them in a very personal way. Yes, hello there. You will not surround me, sir. You will not surround me. I have very good mobility. And even if, even if I get surrounded, it's all right because my forces are over to the side there and they're actually doing a fantastic job because you know what they're doing? They're eliminating everything that I'm not eliminating and that's exactly what we want to see. So let me see if I can maybe just survive here a little bit. I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't taken more damage so far. But these guys are just man-at-arms and as we've seen before, man-at-arms... Ooh, this guy was able to deal some pretty nice damage, not too bad. I mean, I think he aimed for the head a little bit more than the others. But yeah, anyway, the point is, is that we have such great armor, it is really, really hard for enemies to deal any damage to us whatsoever. So it's always a testament to their skill if they're actually able to do something to us. Anyway, as you can see, we should be fine here. It's really just a case of mopping up the rest, but we are quite scattered, which is definitely something I'm not too big a fan of. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens after that. But anyway, the point is is that my plan for this episode is to try and, well, as I say, eliminate most of the Westerlands vassals in this area because, as I say, they're being quite a nuisance. And otherwise, what I'd like to do is attempt maybe some more quests. I think, personally, according to the wiki, I've done most most of the quests that are available in A Clash of Kings, with the, exce with the exception of the ones that require you to be a vassal with certain factions. For example, the Crowned Stag, which is the quest that we did to execute Renly, that one requires you to be a vassal with Dragonstone. So obviously that is, uh, you know, that's a thing. You know, that is a thing. And uh, if only I had not done that other quest though, if only I had not done that other quest where the Westerlands now has control over basically the entirety of the North with the exception of a few thieves, because that would have it would have been much better. It would have been much better for us in the long run if that had been not done. But it was a pretty interesting quest and I actually liked doing it. It was very enjoyable. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> I guess uh, it's kind of a cool thing anyway because it happens so incredibly early in the playthrough that it kind of gives a slightly alternate history of the actual 
you know, books slash show. And I think that's actually pretty cool because it, what if, you know, what if the Westerlands had control over all of these North strongholds that early on? You know, that that's a pretty cool question to ask. Anyway, I did also run across a uh, companion and he joined us. His name is Clavis Leiber and he is pretty decent. He's got 80 in every single proficiency, which is not that good, but he does have some pretty decent stats. He's got like 18 strength and, well, uh, some agility and some intelligence and all that stuff, so I, I guess that's pretty good. But anyway, that will be it for this particular battle, and we will then be moving on and hopefully eliminating the Westerland's presence in this area. Ooh, now what is going on here? Hello? Oh yes, we have a huge amount of Dragonstone vassals appearing out of nowhere. I'm actually very surprised, because as I said, they were being a bit lazy beforehand. So I'm actually very, very impressed that they decided to appear here. As you can see, there's a... Oh, there's Mr. Stannis himself. Hello, Mr. Stannis. I'm sure he's going to be very good. Okay, so what's this? Ah, uh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, the messenger deser deserved his fate. It, we we are going to gain some honor, but we're going to lose morale, so I need to fight someone relatively fast. Oh, no, actually, maybe we don't, we don't even need to do that because we have average morale at the moment. So I suppose that's all right. I guess that is all right. Anyway, let's, uh, let's continue just following these guys. Take a shot with your bow. Yes, you managed to steer us. Uh, steer us? <laughs> steer us. The Pag's heart. Yes, exactly. That's where that's where I was going with that. Anyway, Pierce, the Stag's heart. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Very nice, very good. Okay, so let's hope that they don't just try and raid this village. Let's hope that they actually try to besiege something of worth, because if they do that, I think we could be pretty good. Oh, they took back Bitterbridge. Hmm. I'm actually kind of surprised about that, to be honest. I actually thought that they would be... Well, not very... Uh, oh, what is this? Two minor nobles from one of your villages fought against each other with swords. You decide to do nothing. I don't really mind about that. If they want to do that, then that's their own decision. Anyway, we are going to head over to Long Table here. There is a couple of Westerlands vassals in the area as well. But, ah, there we go. He's getting, he's getting his just desserts. Go, everyone, pile on in there. Destroy him. You know, six ways from Sunday. Thank you very much. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Anyway, I am thinking we will take Ashford. Shall we? <laughs> Shall we? Oh, wait a minute. We didn't even complete this. <laughs> oh, well, that's actually kind of that's actually kind of impressive. Okay, so what? Where, 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 where's he, where, where are you going? Where are you going? You're, you're not going to escape. Thank you very much. You will not escape. Oh, you have 41 relation with me, actually. So maybe it would be a bad idea for me to attack this guy. But we have over a thousand troops fit for battle. And we might as well just take him out. It's one of those times when I'm going to have to play this a little bit carefully. Because this is the enemy lord himself. And I really don't want to eliminate him. I just kind of want to take him off his mount. Because he does have the opportunity to deal some pretty significant damage with his lance. And we certainly don't want him using that lance to its full effect. So if we can, that would be a good idea. Anyway, uh, what is actually going on here with this guy's forces? Wow, Martin Snow? Really? <laughs> Wow, very impressive, Mr. Martin. Very good. Very nice. He's Wow, he's actually doing a very good job. He's getting many kills. I'm surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be so surprised, but I am. Wow, that's kind of impressive. Anyway, yeah, I, uh, I don't exactly know what's going to go on here. I know that uh, obviously we're going to win, but the main reason why I'm a bit confused is because dismounted Reachman Squires? Why does he have those? That, uh, that must... Mm, do they level up into unique units? They might level up into unique units because we've had a bit of a discussion in the comments over the past couple of episodes about why there aren't any unique units for recruitment. And uh, a couple of you did say that maybe it's because there are just some imbalances that need tuning a little bit and maybe in a future version they will then be available once again for, you know adding to your own army because personally I feel like it's a really cool idea to have regular levies you know regular volunteers from village, villages and, and so on and so forth and then you also have noble units slightly nobler units shall we say 
for than the uh, for than the standard from the villages, and you can get those from castles and from towns. And I think that's a really cool idea, and uh, I'm a bit disappointed that it's been removed in this latest version. But I I suppose I understand why it might be because obviously they might be a bit too powerful. So for example, if someone is going to get super super rich by uh, you know just doing a, hu a huge amount of business investing in uh, weavery and dye works, iron works and so on and putting some money in the iron bank as well because I know for sure that if I maybe had become maybe a mercenary to begin with and just used my money and, and you know my opportunistic nature and, and various other situations to my advantage then maybe I would have been able to invest in many more businesses and I wouldn't have had too many too many money troubles so to speak but uh, well that's just how it went, and uh, maybe then, you know, I would have been able to recruit a huge amount of unique units if they still had the unique units in, in here. But anyway, I'm going to just spread everyone out, and is that Stannis there? There he is. Okay, let's speak to him. And uh, we're going to say that we've completed the quest to kill Lord Renly. Oh, yes. Renly, the Iron Throne is mine by rights. All those who deny it are my foes. Yet Renly was my brother. I did not like the man he grew to be, but I remember him as a boy. If he had done his duty to, duty by me, I would sit the throne now, and he would be my chosen heir. Ooh, 22 renown for that. Those lords who supported him, however, good men and true will fight for Joffrey. Oh, wrongly believing him the true king. A Northman might even say the same of Robb Stark, but unfortunately he's dead because of my, my actions, or Elias's actions. But these lords who flocked to my brother's banners knew him for a usurper. They turned their backs on their rightful king for no better reason than dreams of power and glory, and I have marked them for what they are. All right, so there you go. Actually, that's pretty cool that we were able to complete that, at the very least. And what's my relation with uh, Stannis? Oh, ten. Yes, it's not, not the best. Do you... Ah, if you're looking for action against our foes, you may try venturing out to Sheepwood. <laughs> Thank you. That's my village. Thank you very much. <laughs> I assume it's going to get raided very, very soon then by the looks of things. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I am actually going to try and take Ashford myself because it seems like Dragonstone's being a bit weird about things. They seem to be now running away again. So why not? It's going to take 32 hours. Ah, so yes, this is one of those times when I'm going to be cautious. And you may be asking yourself, well, why, why are you being cautious? Because you're usually such an idiot. <laughs> uh, yes, well, I am. That, that can happen at times. I might be slightly overconfident at times and become an idiot as a result. But... This is, this is one of those times where I have to be cautious because we are up against Mace Tyrell himself. And that is not very good because he has, well, a lot of units. And there are over 380 against us right here. And actually, hmm, putting my units into shield wall formation is not going to do anything because these guys don't have shields. So I, I guess it is going to be okay because they're in a pretty reasonable formation. But you can see here that we have how many archers? Literally like two? Yeah, we've got two. Okay, that's fantastic. Very nice. Okay, uh, Mace, uh, if you wouldn't mind, could you just charge? <laughs> could you just charge over here? I'd very much appreciate it. Seems like he's being a bit... Hmm. A bit cautious himself, I guess. But uh, that's that's not really good. That's not really good. I don't know why he's doing this. Ah, I now see. There's a river. There is a river. And wow, there's actually a lot of debris in the river as well, in the form of rocks and, and so on. So that's... Wow, this is, this is actually kind of harsh. This is actually kind of harsh. Well, if they do charge at us with their cavalry... I do have a number of halberdiers and various other units that should be capable of countering them relatively easily, but we'll see. What is he deciding to do? He is he is he actually going to go into the river? If he actually decides to go into the river now, that could be 
kind of good, but it also could be kind of bad. Okay, so I've now told my units to attack the enemy cavalry. Oh yeah, it, I think that someone actually asked in the comments how to do this, how to do the you know specific attacking thing. So basically what happens is if you select a particular unit, I think this can actually work with all of your units at the same time. So if you want to, you can do that. But personally, I, I feel like it's better to just do it with individual groups, so infantry, archers, and so on and so forth. Usually not a good idea to do it with archers, though, because they will generally tend to go closer to the enemy than you'd like. But anyway, how you do it is you just select that unit, and then you press F1. You hold F1, which is the default key for bringing the flag up. So you hold F1, and then you put your flag next to that particular enemy force. And whichever one has the, uh, whichever troop type is the most in that area or the, the closest to your flag is what type your units will then attack. So in this case, it is cavalry. And it seems like they're not actually doing that anymore because they have run away. I have no idea what Mace Tyrell is doing right now. I think that he is, is he drunk? Is he drunk? I, I don't know. I, I would hope not. All right, so it looks to me like I am going to have to charge my forces in. I actually wanted to keep them in formation, but it seems like that is basically the only thing I can do. They did attempt to charge at me a little bit, but then they actually ran away after the fact and did not really do that much. So it's kind of a bit weird. I have no idea why they are deciding to do this, but hopefully my various halberdiers and things like that will be able to murder everything in the area. Let's hopefully be able to do that. Now, obviously, they are going to be coming in with their infantry as well, so I will attempt to be a little bit of a diversion for the opponent, but I have to be very careful because, as you can see, they do use pole arms of sorts and they deal bonus damage against mounted units. So if we can actually do a little bit more damage then I think we could have a decent shot at victory here, or at the very least, maybe something where I can run away, because this is literally just right outside Ashford, and I was attempting to take it, of course, and they interrupted me while I was attempting to build my ladders. So I'm actually going to get off my horse right now and just do things the old-fashioned way, because I feel like that might make me a bit more efficient in what I'm able to kill because my current weapon, the cleaver, is not particularly good on horseback. So I'm going to have to be replacing that at some point with maybe something a little bit longer than that because as it stands right now it is very difficult to use in a mounted combat situation. So let me see if I can maybe just... Ah, he managed to get away. I'm actually kind of surprised that we're able to win the day here with so many lances coming into us right there, but I suppose that is actually it, because we did have a huge amount of lances, and if the lances don't deal enough damage to kill, then uh, they're, they're basically useless, you know? They're basically useless, because at that point, they are within such close proximity to us, and indeed our units, then they can't really do that much. So I'm pretty happy about that, to be honest. And maybe if I, if I can continue doing some damage here, we might be able to save this unit in general. Stay alive, halberdier! I'm... Can I just say something real quick? I have no idea how I still have not taken any damage. I'm, I'm literally running around in the enemy's lines, and I have literally not taken... I've taken some damage now, but because they are all polearm users and people with not exactly great power strike, it is making things very easy for me so far. Wow. I am very surprised. Okay, come on guys, let's do this. I, I, I think I've charged everyone in, haven't I? Yeah, everyone's charged in apart from, well, the archers have been eliminated now. But yeah, that is kind of surprising to me, for sure. So, well. Guess that's how it is. Guess that's how it is. Maybe they're just scared, you know? Maybe they're just scared of Mr. Elias and his wonderful two-handed warhammer. And I think... I think that's actually gonna... Yeah, look at that. We've, we've already eliminated almost 200 enemy units. That is kind of crazy. 
Wow, it's actually kind of amazing that the Dragonstone vassals have literally just appeared at Harvest Hall just when I needed them. And yeah, there we go, just right on time. 3,500 coins for Mr. Leo Lefford right there. So yeah, at Ashford, I did actually survive the battle with that, uh, with Mace Tyrell. I just didn't want to continue the fight because... I kind of wanted to try and defend some of our forces. As you could see here, Bitterbridge and Grassfield Keep have been taken. Unfortunately, Grassfield Keep is under siege by the Reach themselves, so I won't be able to do anything there. But thankfully, the Dragonstone vassals did appear here and they drove off. Uh, I believe his name was uh, Davin, Davin Lannister or something along those lines. Anyway, I will hopefully be able to secure more of this area. The Reach is very... They're very stubborn, you know, they're very stubborn and you can't really get rid of them that easily. So I suppose we'll have to try a little bit more to eliminate their towns rather than their castles. Because the castles are not exactly, well, not too valuable, shall we say. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I will attempt to take a look at the wiki and see if there are any other quests that we can also do. Because obviously bear in mind that some quests have been removed in this version and uh, I know that there was one where you could actually go over to uh, I can't remember the name of the uh, of the city but you could go over to where Daenerys is and you could actually speak to her but uh, unfortunately I think that has been removed so anyway that will be it for this episode I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time